Hi, book club members. I'm Jen. And I'm Carrie. And this is Warhammer 40k Book Club, where we read from a crag. This is episode number one, two, three. And our book is Death Worlder by Victoria Hayward. It is a story about Catachan versus Tyranids. It's a match made in heaven, really. We posted several questions on our website, wh40kbookclub.com, and we encourage participation in our conversations via YouTube, our site, or Encrypted Vox channel. Spoiler warning, if you haven't yet read the book, definitely check it out before listening to this episode, as we'll be talking about the book from start to finish in great detail. With that, let's dive in. As always, Carrie, did you enjoy the book? I did. I did. I found myself staying up late many a night. I was like, hey, should I read to this page? And then like, oh, well, I got to find out what happens in the next chapter. Fair. I actually, so I actually did the audiobook for this one, which I think people know I have really mixed feelings on audiobooks. Um, I did the audiobook and I have to grab up her name again. Uh, Gabrielle Nellis Payne did the narration and she did a really good job. I really enjoyed it. Um, I just, I enjoyed the book. It was a good, it was the type of story that I wanted for the nids where it was just short, fast, not too much machinations and plot twists and other stuff. It was just very much to the point. It got in, it got out and um, was horrific in between that. It was very Warhammer 40k. It's a very Warhammer 40k. Uh, what part stood out to you? Oh, there was, there was a, a few things. Um, I actually really liked when Khan snapped at Wraith. It was basically just like, this is why the Adeptus Mechanicus suck. And I'm like, I'm agreeing with you 100%. You know, just when they're trying to even get inside and there's these people gunned down as they're trying to get shelter. Oh, no, but it's like, keep everybody out because I don't want, you know, rivals seeing what I'm doing. The world is burning outside, but oh, no, can't stop, you know, the train for knowledge. And this is ridiculous. And, you know, when they saw the servitors that were Catachan, she's like, what, what the shit? Like, that's not OK. And many for many different reasons. So I really enjoyed that. But the other thing I really enjoyed is I really like the back and forth between the Cadian and the Catachans with the assumptions of what the other one is like. I really liked that. And um, I was actually explaining this to my daughter. Um, we were talking about the book in general, and I was talking about the Cadians versus the Catachan. I loved the assumptions, and I did love the constant. And most of it came with Adair and Andits. But when they were like, oh, that's what everybody thinks we are, but you misunderstand what's going on here, right? Yeah, we're brash and we're loud and we charge into stuff, but only if we know we're going in together and this benefits the group. Like, I liked all of that. And I did like some of the accusations against the Cadians. And we, having read a lot of books about the Cadians, were like, mm, not quite right, actually. That's not quite like when um, I think it's Adair very quickly says in the beginning, you're only an officer because of your last name. Yes. But also, you need to understand that they're a very militaristic society. So this guy's probably been trained and brought up to be... It wasn't like he was just like, oh, oh give my son a job, won't you? I mean, <laughs> like, it's the, I think she's confusing him at that point with the Volpone, right? Okay. Uh, because the Cadians, like, yes... Maybe you will definitely get picked for this because of who your dad is, but you all go through the same white shield training together. Mm hmm. You all go through that together. The other thing that I really did like, and it was very Cadian, it was very Cadian, is the Catachan kept being like, oh, it's because we grew up on a death world. We grew up on a death world. We grew up on a death world. And I'm like, my darling, <laughs> um, Cadia was also a death world. And uh, we're like, substitute your death stalker cobras and all of this stuff for literal demons, mm -hmm. literal demons. So like, but I did like that. He was just like, okay, okay. Like it's more relevant here. We don't need to get into a measuring contest about whose death world sucks more. Right. Sucked. Past tense. Um, I have to be careful. My husband will run in saying Katia stands. I thought that well, was also very Cadian, though, of him to just be like, okay. Like the one time, the only time he really snapped was when Adair said, rather be on a death world than on a dead world. 
And even then, that I was like, dude, was that's harsh. that was way harsh, Ty. Like, not necessary. And I think Khan would have let him hit her if there Easily. weren't other pressing matters going on. Easily. I, um, that was a hard one to leave because I, I have a lot to say about Adair. But I, and that was a part that actually, I will say this part really quickly that stood out to me that I didn't love. The Katachan are a race of humans unto their own, basically, at this point. They are very large. They are very burly. They are very muscled and just, they're larger, right? They are a bigger species. But they're kind of what I would consider almost like Amazonian people. Yes, very much. I picture them being more like if anyone here has played Diablo, the barbarian race oh, yeah. versus the normal people race, right? Where the barbarians are just broader, they have they're more muscle, their bones are bigger, right? They're a taller people. When they described a dare being six foot seven, I was like, okay, at this point you're just making a female space marine. Like, that's a little obscene. I don't know. I was like, because some uh WNBA basketball players are that tall. You know, True. I mean, it's just like, that's actually my first thought. I was like, well, I mean, she could play basketball, I'm sure, with the best of them. <clears throat> Probably. But just some of the other ways they described her, I was like, mm, you're, you're teetering close into the, you're teetering close into the part where I'm like, really? Did they, did it need to be quite like this? Having said that, I really did enjoy how very di- multidimensional, like, Adair is probably one of my favorite examples of that. In the beginning, she's she's cocky and she's brash. And as they say a couple of times, she's what everyone thinks of a Catachan, right? Well, that's why I love and then a- and the end. when she, you know, does the melta and to his, where he's hiding out and the way she barrels in. And he was like, that was like in his head. He's like, that was the most Catachan thing I think I've ever seen. Yeah, that's yes. a way of describing Adair. Very much so, but I did like that by the end of the book, you see, no, no, she's very human and she does have feelings and she does have a softer side to her without getting all warm and squishy, right? Mm-hmm. But she's, she and Andits really bonded together and had this understanding and clearly this affection for one another, probably birthed from the battlefield. I don't think that they're going to go off and make Katie and Katachan hybrids. But maybe, I don't know. Um, I liked that. I like that they did make her not this one dimensional, just like, hey, right. character the whole time. Like a Rambo, right? Basically, Rambo with boobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Ramboobs. Um, Ramboobs. <laughs> <laughs> Let us never discuss Ramboobs again. <laughs> there's, there's probably a subreddit for that. Anyways. Yeah. This is tea. I swear this is tea. There's nothing in this but tea. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, the characterization in general, which we'll talk more about later, but I really thought that she did a good job of making everyone have nice dimension. Even, even Wraith, who we'll talk about oh, here. Oh, yes. Even Wraith. Even Ghost a little bit. We'll talk about Ghost in a second because I have a few feelings about Ghost. I have a lot of feelings um, about Ghost. The one last thing I wanted to say that really struck out to me and I was like, oh my God, thank God, please, was um, the cultist. She, you want to talk about just clueless. Like, I did like, she made the argument that you and I have made a lot with some of these Tyranid and Tau books where it's like, the common people lead these horrible awful lives and they're just chewed up as part of the imperium's machinery right Mm -hmm. so you understand when the nids when all of a sudden the star children are calling to you and when um hopes of a better life hopes of a better life and when the tau comes selling oh my god you're gonna be so awesome in our caste system but don't think of it like a caste system um they I, we understand that, right? And I did like that she really led with a lot of that, right? About like, oh, you know, this is the lives are so awful and they're being chewed up. But then later you discover she was very much part of that system. And I did like that when they point out like with the moth farms. That, how I was just thinking awful about that with, the, moth with, with the moth farms. farms. And, and she's, she's like, like oh, God, why would, I, why would I have been on those ranches? Gross. 
Darlin, mm-hmm. like you were part of. Oh, and then when she's like, "Oh, I don't take the bridge. Like that's for the hoi polloi. I take this other way." Like you were very much the aristocracy. You were cosplaying as a revolutionary. Exactly. And I loved, loved when Andis lost his shit on her. Yep, me too. It was just like all of this is you. Although I do like, this is going to sound weird. I do like that she was unrepentant at the end. Yes. I she wasn't I, just like, I, oh, no. I wouldn't have liked it if she had, you know, had a, uh, a redemption arc, I guess. Like at one yes. point she was kind of coming around like, you know, like the fog had kind of been lifted. But then the more that they got closer to the bigger Tyranids, of course, she kind of went went back into this. But she still had this thing in her mind about the how awful the Imperium is. And that also could have been, honestly, from not even the Gene Stars, but just the thoughts of uh, the aristocracy. Like, you know, the Imperium just comes and takes our jewels and you know, takes all these things. And, you know, like their people reminded me a lot of like, you know, the prioress from Chaucer, just the gaudiness of everything. Yeah, the just... gaudiness and the oh my god, I don't know this this sense of like, but we're artists, so like our world is important throughout the whole Imperium, darling. No one's heard of it. You know, no one's heard of it. She's like, but she gets mad about the statue, and then oh it's just like, are you serious? The statue? She's Over like, you would rock? not understand. We're a people of culture and pride, and he was like, look around you. It's all gone. It's gone. I thought it was an it was an interesting stroke from the author because obviously you feel so sorry for this loss of life. You feel so bad for I mean billions dead, right? Left to kill for the Tyranids and nobody wants the Tyranids to get a victory and nobody wants any of that and this is awful and terrible. But on the other hand, it's real hard to feel sorry for this this planet that's just like we're just better than everyone else because we have beautiful gyms and culture and like when she's talking about the opera and the the pet poodle moths is all i could picture if you've ever seen the picture of poodle moths that's my picture (laughs) and like when she's talking about all of this stuff you're like you guys are as they said in the beginning right con was just like this world bred soft people right yeah, and yes, I feel bad for, like, the people who were toiling in those moth farms and the people who didn't ask for any of this, right? And we're the, definitely the victims of both the Imperium and the Tyranids. That's all terrible, but, like... We're the victims of the Lazuli culture in general. Exactly. Exactly, which... Nice job on the naming there. Um, I know, right? <laughs> I, I really liked like that. The Lazuli, yeah. um, I actually also really liked the Tanzanite Cathedral, because if you know about Tanzanite, I was like, that's... That's kind of fun and cool. Um, anyways, they honestly, uh, I liked all gemstones. the I liked all the jewel names for stuff. It was really, it was neat because you could really get it. Did a good job of helping you get a nice visual of this planet, which, yes, it was basically a magical kingdom in my head. But yeah, you guys got what you deserved. Like you, you, you deserved this cult to come in here because you started your all of your aristocracy started cosplaying as revolutionaries, thinking like, oh. And again, as I think you're absolutely correct, this idea of they're coming to take our gems and they don't appreciate us. And, you know, we're, we're just so important. And that I liked her arc, though. Her arc was very interesting as a vi- as a villain. I hesitate to call her like a real villain. because She didn't have any like authority or power, really. Right, right. Um, she starts with bewilderment, right? These are not the star children who spoke to us. This is this is so confusing. Then goes into the, like, well, yeah, the Imperium's awful, so of course. And then right back into that. No, no, no. This is what was coming. Like, this is what we wanted. This is this would have been better than your Imperium. And I think if she would have had a, my God, what have I done? Moment, it would have felt really flat and hollow. So I liked that. Bless her little heart. She went out. Well, I think the only time we ever get that is when the Patriarch gets killed. Because that's when the scales fall from everybody's eyes, right? And this isn't the star children who were speaking to us. Right. No, no, no. But Those people honestly, are at this to take point, us to a better life. It was too late. They could kill the patriarch all they want. It's it's over. The Tyranids are already here. It's, yeah. I also, can we mention how neat it was that the patriarch gets killed very early in the book? 
Almost right. every Tyranid book is the race to find the patriarch. Nope. So let's talk about let's talk about the Nids for a second here. The last Tyranid book we read that we both really enjoyed was Leviathan. Leviathan dealt with the very, almost the identical timing, right? The death, the final death throes of a world before mm-hmm. the Tyranids slurp it dry. Um, ah, yeah, that that was Space Marines versus so two very important differences here: one, Space Marines versus Nids, but they were in the center capital, like they were in the spot where the Nids, like their last bastion, right? This was, this was, you could actually almost picture this story taking place at the same time as Leviathan. Mm-hmm. All the stuff's going on over here and these guys are off. Like, you know, it, did you, do they hit a little different as the kids say against humans? Uh, well, yes. Uh, yes, obviously. Cause obviously, you know, they're having to like, you know, totally change like how they're getting around, how they're, uh, how they're dealing with them. They're, you know, actually will run away from them. Because they're like, ah, oh, crap, we can't take this on by ourselves. But I think, like, the other thing is, is that, honestly, it was the attitude of it all. Because in Leviathan, the space beings are like, we can save this place. Because the space marines are here, and they can save it, you know, before the final spores come in. Mm-hmm. This place has got no hope. There is no saving this. It's too late. With the, the density of the spores, it's too late. It's done. And... Instead of getting these people off planet, the Imperium is just like, well, die well. Well, boys, it was a good try. <laughs> yeah, which I'm, which actually horrified me that they weren't even going to try to get them off planet. Try to, you know, recoup the losses, bring in the exterminatus. Nope. Nope. Guess you guys are just going to die. It's cool. Guess I'll die. Right? Um. It, it it reminds you of Warhammer, like, again, the Warhammer 40k setting, right? Everyone is expendable. I did like when when Haruto first presents the solution and Khan's like, you're talking about exterminatus. Like, we don't have the authority for that. We can't declare exterminatus on a world. Well, to save how many other worlds? Oh, Yes, we can do that. Yeah. That was interesting to see play out. But I think also at that point, to be fair, that Khan was just, she was done. She was done with all of this. She was Khan mad. Was uh, just like either let's all die or let's leave. One of the two. Basically. And when she realizes we can't get this thing off planet. We can't save people. I liked this one. This one was interesting because you have the Catachan. The, the difference that I really liked between the Space Marines is obviously the Space Marines are always a little bit more durable. The The little guys are even more dangerous with the humans. But the Catachan, there was almost like a, huh, well, this is crazy mentality to this whole group where they really, and Wraith probably did a lot to help this conversation along, but like they really discussed what was going on and oh yeah they're microscopic and whew, yeah that is definitely eating through my clothes right now right um much i mean still there to do the job in it to win it but it was i liked seeing how much more they described what they all looked like and because they weren't at the major like objective for the nids they were kind of an offshoot they got to see more of just the little obnoxious scary small boys who are coming in at them it, uh, I really liked the way that she handled the nids, which is saying a lot because I don't like the nids. Well, I think this is also one of the first times we've seen a book about the nids where it's this far into the digestive process. You know, just with the different types of nids that they found, the the sea of digestive fluids with the half, you know, eaten soldiers kind of hanging out. Um the big old monsters right. that were just eating everything. We don't tip, typically we don't get to this point because they're either like that's it, exterminatus, or they've won, right? Or they've right. somehow they've all escaped. We don't really get. We've never really seen before like all these things. Like oh, look at this jungle that they somehow made here with their spores and 
uh, just the whole thing, which I kind of enjoyed that Wraith was just like, this is all fascinating. We don't have any records of this. And she's like, you know, making records. Because on the one hand, like, that's actually very, they do need that information. Like, this is what it's mm -hmm. like when it gets this far into the infestation. Right. This is what we look for. This is what we see. Again, the last time we saw a planet this close to this point was in Leviathan. But again, they're in a major population center. So you're exactly right. Like, this is the, oh, by the way, this is what's going on in the rest of the planet right now. The seas are literally tight. It, um. I love how they make the, the atmosphere becomes like a stomach. You know, when you puke the bile, that's all I could imagine that sea. And then I imagined that it had a smell and that was a really difficult scene, y'all. I imagined most of this smelled. Most of this probably smelled very badly. Um, then it's in general, just anyways, um, whew, talk about, talk about Major Khan, shall we? Good leader. Did you like her? I did like her. I thought she was a good leader. She knew, she knew how to handle the difference, like, you know, with the Cadians and, and the Catachan. She knew how, how to make that work. She knew how to appeal to both. You know, um, in the very beginning when that Cadian uh, lieutenant or Cadian captain's like, we're going to execute her. She's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Let's call like, down. I understand she left her post and your guys were killed because of it. And that sucks. That's awful. But because she left, she actually prevented the Nids from crawling over the wall. And I don't know, eating all of us. But. The key, but that guy was your stereotypical Cadian of the Cadian pride. We have rules and regulations, and these are the rules. And you don't thumb your nose at the rules. Right. I don't care how bad and it is. So she handled it. You know, she knocked him out. Mm -hmm. She totally could have killed him. Would have been awful. But in the Catachan way, like what they were saying earlier, like it's like when Haruto leaves, and and it's just like. Oh, oh my God, I'm so used yes. to a situation where like he would have been shot like on the spot. You and don't the, desert. Yeah, I don't and, care. But who the you're Katachan following. way is like there's not that many of us, so we can't just kill people for not following orders all the all the time. So I like how she was able to kind of, you know, work that through in the beginning with that Katie and Captain, and then at the end when Haruto, her like second in command, disobeys her her direct orders well and what's interesting about it is that she and this is the thing that i really liked is that she kind of questioned herself in that moment right where she's like okay um maybe i'm losing it maybe i'm slipping a little bit maybe i am not being the best leader that i could be right now and i have failed him so she lets him go to your point there's not a lot of us left on this planet right now so i'm not going to just mm -hmm. waste his life when they come through on their bullet train, he was kind of right. He was absolutely kind of right on that, right? And that was definitely something he should have done. And had had they gone with him, they would have all been on that train together and it probably would have been better. So I liked the idea that she was kind mm -hmm. of fallible as a leader, that she recognized maybe there's something to this. And she kind of thinks for a while there and he's probably dead anyways. Well, they both think that the other other group is dead because of the the, the swarm and the spore uh, bombs that kind of came on down. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I understood why she didn't go after the shunt because yes, they could have gone an hour out shot. there and there'd be nothing. And then they've lost all that time and they don't have much time. So in a way, I think it was better how it did happen. They found it great. They can catch up. Exactly. And that's, again, because you had a question. But with Nobody them, knew. Right. With them not going, therefore, they were guaranteed to not lose all that time. So. Yeah, exactly that. It, it was a good thing to do. But it was also a long shot. And 100%, they could have gone out there and been like, oh, it doesn't work. Um, can we talk really briefly about how Ray was basically Storm? With the Baneblade yeah, and the kind of was. <laughs> Spirit of the Bane Blade, spirits of the shunt. I was like, oh my god, you're Aurora Monroe. Um, loved it. Anyways, I liked Khan. I liked how she knew she had to adapt slightly for Anditz because he's Acadian and he is different. And I did like 
when very in the very in the beginning they pay off in this in the beginning right with Adair when she's like look Cadians are different than us but that doesn't mean you get to go and just disrespect them Mm -hmm. they have their own culture their own ways their own things and they're a really good fighting force and she immediately recognized that Adair was a good officer and that she needed him (laughs) because she needed uh she needed all the officers she could get and all the help she could get Mm mm-hmm so I liked the idea that she was able to nicely meld between the two styles and she could talk to them. She could talk to her people, but she could also talk to him without patronizing him or being like, dude, get on board with our ways or not. Even though by the end there, he's starting to get a little more catachan Well, right. Um, well, I mean, I loved it the first time they broke camp and he was like, I can't sleep. Like, because he's a little PTSD a little bit from what happened to him. And she, she's like, well, if you can't sleep, you know, find something to do. Like, surely your last pistol could be cleaned because she remembered Cadian's like to clean their weapons when they go to bed. And he's like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, versus telling him, shut up and go to sleep. Right. The interest. OK, again, not to the interesting other thing with her, though, that I found a little fascinating was when they come across the river of the half even eaten Cadians. And he kind of snaps. And she's just like, dude, get, get a hold of yourself. We don't have time for this. We can't do mm-hmm. any of this. Like, oh, we got to go. And she really kind of browbeats him on that, right? Later, when they find the Catachan servitors, she has her own moment of, no, this is not okay. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not okay. It's a little different when it's your own people, isn't it? And she spends the time to go and, like, help those servitors which oh my god we'll talk about the mechanicus here in a second because aren't they fun um (laughs) speaking of the cadians and the catachans adair and anditz as a pair was this the death world duo that we always needed in our life dude they are my prime nomination right now for best romance in the book of our book club book of the year awards Y'all, it's going to be really tough between them and Haruto and Wraith. When she shows them how she sees too, him, I was what? like... I hate the Mechanicus so much. Whatever. We'll talk more about that in a second. Um, yes, they were a great romantic coupling without it being like super lovey-dovey and like overboard because they're in the middle of an active war zone. Right. Uh, and they both remembered that they were in the active war this, zone. This isn't a Michael Bay movie where they have time for romance in the middle of the uh, fire <laughs> fight. And, Smith plays. And right and sunsets. And I don't want to miss a thing. That's right. I missed you more than Pearl Harbor missed the point. And that's an awful lot. I really liked that, that it was definitely this affectation. Like they, they were, they had a real affection for each other by the end there. It wasn't like, oh. <gasps> I fell in love at first sight. They grew on each other. They came together. It was really nice. No grandstanding or giant lovey-dovey speeches. And they both remembered that they were in an active war zone. Um, But let's be clear, like, they kind of got engaged in the scene when they were arguing about who was going to leave the other one to die. It actually reminded me of uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow arguing at the Soul Stone. Very much so. Very much so. Um, I hope for all the best for them. But I did like, like, in the serious note, of aside from the romance, I do kind of think this was the Death World or combo we all needed. Like, we talk a lot about how the Space Marines were meant to work in tandem together, right? And you can see how they... Mm-hmm. We'll go with the super easy one. The Imperial Fists and the Iron Warriors, the Siege and the Defenders... You can see how that would really work. Obviously, the Raven Guard bolsters anyone that they're with. Like, you can see how they were supposed to work together. I think a lot of the Death Worlds probably the same. They add a lot to each other. The the rigidity and the supreme, like, look, we are by the book. We are soldiers to our core of the Cadians versus the survivalist. Okay, we think a little bit out of the box and sometimes we bend to break the rules, but we will fight everything that comes at us of the Catachans. Such a nice combo, and I needed this in my life, and I need another book that's just Cadians with Catachans. I don't know. I kind of want a Catachan and Volpone book. That'd just be entertaining. (laughs) Can you imagine? Do y'all remember Caddyshack when the caddies go to the pool? That's what that book would be like. 
up serious with a lot of death. Uh, there'd be a lot of bloodshed in that book. Friendly fire, <laughs> let's call it. Um, I don't know that they would work together very well. That's why it would be very entertaining for me. Oh, my God. I don't think you would have a romance in that book. You might. You, you might. Know. You never know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Love love is mysterious and finds itself in mysterious ways. Um, I did like it, though, because I felt like we've had a lot of books where we really looked, took a hard, deep look at the Cadians about, like, this is how they are. This is how they operate. These are some of the problems that they have. But ultimately, this is what makes Acadian Acadian. It was really nice to get that same thing from a, about the Catachan. Where, no, 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 no. We are not all Sly Marbo. <laughs> like, we're not all just the... I feel like the Catachan were created because somebody watched Predator and was like, what if there was a planet of the Predator kill team? And on one hand, yes, I'm here for it and I love it. Um, Predator and Rambo too. With the red bandana. Yep. Um, I was going to say Rambo, but Predator. That, that Rambo works. 2. Not Rambo 1. Definitely Rambo 2. Um, yeah, I feel like that was what that was. And I did like this deeper look into, no, no. We have culture. And we actually, there is some method to our madness. And our whole planet is a death world and everything will kill you. But apparently they have poetry. So. And they take it very seriously. Um, Let's talk about our tech adept, shall we? And the whole... Wraith was not your typical tech priest. She was, I would argue, more human, I think. Yeah. She was at least sensitive to some of the human yes. weaknesses and frailties. Yes, she was. Uh, you know, and honestly, like, uh, she was very helpful, like, in the analysis with everything. And she was able to look at stuff and be like, okay, I think that you need to do this because of this wound. And, you know, but, you know, eight errors. Pretty much just like, whatever, spit on it and sew it up. But uh, I, I can't remember. It's like they stepped, oh, it was the boot, and they stepped on something with his boot, and it was eating through the boot, and she was immediately right there helping him get that off, but then analyzing it at the same time. But but like, whereas most mechanicus, you know, especially like the Mago Biologus, they'd be sitting there and analyzing it while it's eating through to his foot, she at least right. understood, let's save him first and then analyze it once he's out of danger. Yes, I, I would. That, and that made her a lot more human, though. Can we say really quickly? Ooh, one of the most horrific things I meant to talk about earlier when we were talking about the difference between the space marines and the humans. Hmm, this book presented me with the new horrifying thing, which is when they started noticing that some of their old wounds were opening up. yes. And they talked about with the Mago, with the tech priest, they were like, ooh, yeah, all of her flesh parts are going to start, like, opening up, like, when she first got the metal right. implants. And wow. Wow, 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 wow. No, thank you. Actually, one of my favorite quotes, though, was, was with that, when she tells Haruto the flesh is weak. Because I was like, yes, the Iron Hands always said, he said, yes. But, oh my God, I wrote down the actual quote. Oh, but that like, is, that's, that's why it's special. important. And that's right. And I, was like, I that's loved fantastic that. because I I did just finish, you know, reading a couple of Horace Heresy books and a lot of some, a lot of them did have some of the Iron Hands and it was the Iron Hands. When the uh, Salamanders were with the Iron Hands, the Salamanders were just like, what happened to you guys? Like, with the whole flesh is weak, like, y'all have gone way overboard to the phone. You've lost your humanity. You've lost sight of what even Ferris Manus would, would say. So I loved this line. Yes, but that's why it's important. I absolutely loved that. I thought that was great. He was, I loved his, I loved Haruto's character in general. Yeah. But that, in particular, I thought that was a really great, really great line from him um and a nice reminder and i like that she wasn't just like that's not logical she just hmm. again a little more human mm -hmm. adds a little bit of humanity to it i was really really worried because throughout the whole book right con kept thinking she's like she's not telling us everything there is something she's not telling us I was really worried that they were going to get to the end and she's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm killing all of you to sacrifice for this or 
something like that. Like I thought there was going to be some or that she ha -ha, what's a twist or that she lied that she knew it wasn't a weapon and was letting him think that it was because that's the only way that they could. So I yes, just like that, I was actually very thankful that she really didn't know what it was. She just knew it was something important. And but I was again, very thankful. This thing that drives me crazy about the mechanic is, oh, we don't know what it is, but it's archaeotech. That's very important. That's worth, like, sacrificing everybody here for it. Is it? I know in the in mechanic this case, is, it is. So here's the thing that's funny about that, is that in this case, is it worth it? Which is one of my questions. Yes. Yes, it is worth it. I don't know. Having said that, here's the part about the mechanicus that I, I do get fl frustrated with, right? And even she clearly wrestled with this thought too, because once she realizes what it is, right? I don't know that he was ever going to tell anybody, which by the way, I was also kind of waiting for the Magos to like pop out and be like, ha ha, I'm the real villain all along. Um, <laughs> especially not that they didn't do that either, right? It's old man Withers, old man Magos. Um, really happy that that didn't happen. But I don't get the impression since his warning message is like, oh, if you're coming to steal my work, you found a device that will, it's, it's the Genesis project from Wrath of Khan. That's <laughs> literally what it is. Um, you found a device that'll re-terraform a world. And if we go off of our inference or the implications in this book, you could customize it. Hence why this planet is literally made of gemstones. That makes zero sense. Like, what an important discovery. At what point were you going to tell the rest of the Imperium, buddy? No, he or wasn't you waiting? because this is his research. Right. Were you waiting for the patent documents to come through so yes. you could trademark it? Like, yes. Probably yes. That, Whatever the 40K equivalent is. Because all for knowledge, right? And it's not just for knowledge, which is actually one thing. So, again, Horace Heresy talk here. But in Graham McNeil's book, Mechanicus, one thing that they talk about is the shared knowledge they all mm -hmm. have yes they were doing this research but when they get results they share it and after that fell that was lost this idea of sharing anything it's all jealously guarded and hoarded for the betterment of themselves themselves and it's their it's their currency like and uh a storm storm of iron yeah, hundred percent, absolutely, and it's it's their currency. Their currency yeah. is their research and their knowledge, and it's so frustrating because again, the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Yeah, but man, you are some prideful bastards, aren't you? Pride and, and you greedy. are every bit. You are every bit as duplicitous and greedy and just generally shitty as the Inquisition. You're just a different brand of it, right? right? Like with all of your, and that's, that was the part that was so frustrating when she's like, this is probably the most important discovery in centuries. I'm like, is it? And then when she starts explaining that it's the Genesis project, I was like, oh, oh. but then I get angry because again, bruh, what were you doing with it? Why wasn't this already off the planet? No, you can't take the actual device itself, but all of the research and the designs and everything like that, like... At what point were you going to take this off of the planet? Or were you so busy in your experimentation? Like, oh, that was very interesting. It killed Tyranids. Let's see what it does to humans. Oh, that's very interesting. Dude, <laughs> as my husband repeatedly said about the end and the death, the city is on fire and chaos is in the house. You need to leave. The Tyranids. It is final stage Tyranidism. Like... That was the thing that was frustrating with me. And I liked that Wraith was like, oh, this is bad. Right. But here's the question. At the same time, though, when Khan was like, we have to use it to destroy the planet. And she's like, no, this is important. This is knowledge. It's like, ah, see, that programming is still there. You just can't let it go. Even though Well, Haruto, because Haruto has to go back and tell Khan about it. When they realize they can destroy the planet, she's oh, upset. Right. But then she offers to stay and detonate it. Because like, she realizes, oh, yeah, I can't detonate it myself. Well, or, we can't do it. That is me. true. But her initial reaction was very mechanicus. It's like, no, very mechanicus. This is knowledge. We, we, we can't do this without. It's like, hun, we're all going to die. Yeah. 
And this is going to be forgotten. So. The thing, though, here's the part why I ask, is it worth it? Okay, on the surface, you have something that will terraform and rebuild these worlds that have been destroyed by the Tyranids and wipe out the Tyranids on the plan on the process. Great, good, great, grand, love it. To get that to work, you're going to have to take that knowledge to the Mechanicus. Right. So who's to say you don't end up with another Magos who's going to be like, oh my god, this is amazing. I'll get back to you in a couple thousand years after I've tested it, hoarded it, and researched it to my satisfaction. So like, on one hand, you've gotten off the planet. It's not like with Creed, where Ursula gets off the planet with this huge chart of all the planets that they could pot- potentially mm-hmm. remake Cadia to. Right. And permission from Bobby G to go and do the thing. Mm-hmm. That we know will get done. That's why I, I really wrestled with at the end this idea that, wow, that's awesome. Is it actually ever going to see the light of day? Because the mechanic is kind of sucks sometimes. Yeah. So I ask again. When it comes to Archaeotech, yes. Is it worth it? Yes and no. I mean, it's hard to say. Yeah. I think the answer for me is a big resounding mayhaps. Mayhaps, yeah. But at the same time, without them finding it, they wouldn't have found that shuttle. They wouldn't have been able to get off world. Otherwise, they would have died with everybody else. But at the same time, but the killed ghost man, that was not cool. He didn't need much. <laughs> and he no. was so badass. I had, when they killed Ghost, I had hardcore Tanith flashbacks because first off, first off, I was like, this guy is like a young, mentally sane Hlaine Larkin. And if you kill my boy Larkin, killed my boy Larkin. He was, he was giving Sane Larkin. He was giving McCall. For all of my Gaunt's Ghost fans out there, he was definitely giving McCall. How dare you? Yeah. This man survived the entire book. This man survived the jungles of Katachan on his own to become a badass sniper who was amazing and really, really came in handy throughout the entire book. And he died I'm not gonna lie though mechanic has his fault. death his death shook me really hard and really hit me hard wraiths did a little bit too nah and it might be my most favorite romantic line in all of Warhammer 40k now when he's like I will look for you everywhere and she says that would be most satisfactory such a mechanic. That is the Warhammer 40k equivalent of I love you, I know. <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> Look, y'all, it made me happy, okay? The Mechanicus need love, too. Eh, I guess. She was a good Mechanicus, okay? okay and I know was... that my girl Wraith would she have was... gotten that out into the world. Okay, yes, she probably would have. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just saying, she would have shared it and gotten it out there and been like, oh my god, so first off, we used it on this planet, and great results, y'all. Oh my god, what's the over or under on, like, some mechanicist guy looking at it and being like, it's giving Xenos, let's destroy it. And then you just sacrifice billions of people well, for literally nothing. So, no, I don't see mechanicist saying that. Oh, yeah, the Inquisition, though. I see Robbie Bobby saying that. Oh, maybe? Because... Bob or the Inquisition either giving... I don't think we made this, or... This seems a little chaos Just because I remember in Dark Imperium... Mm-hmm. He was getting on the Mechanicus for not uh, destroying the Xenos ships they were coming across. He was like, no, we don't use this. Like, have you guys forgotten everything? Well, the answer to that is yes. Uh, Be- yeah, it's, it's literally in the intro. <laughs> because, um... Everything gets everything was lost, so no, they they don't know, and they're just like, ooh, shiny things, and I think my dog just figured out how to open the door. Yep, 
Yes, yes, they did. Yep. They're like, Mom, All we also want to talk about it. Three of them. Amazing. Oh. Okay. All three of them are in here. On, I didn't realize they missed see, me that much. All you can see on screen is a pity butt wiggling. So all you see is a wiggly butt. You see because Sonya's ears. That's what pities do. Oh, yes, we do see Sonya's ears, but all I see is a wiggly pity butt, pity butt, which makes me very happy in life. Yeah, this book, again, this book, for what it was, it, again, just a, hey, this is an Astro Militarum novel. We're getting in. We're having some awful, horrible stuff happen. We're going to have lots of good action. And then we're getting out. It was a nice, complete story. Really enjoyed it. Enemies became friends. Friends became enemies. Everyone was richer for the experience. Lots of character development. Really enjoyed it. But I am going to wrestle for a while with whether or not it's worth it. The funny thing is, is that when they were sent on this mission, I was already laughing. I was like, it's not going to be anything they can use. I already know this. Because yeah. that's how Warhammer 40k go. And yeah, with, that's how it's going to be. It's not a weapon. And with Archaeotech, I mean, it, honestly, it could have just been like, you know, a USB drive full of like data. And like, oh, yes, we would have totally. totally sacrificed everything for this. They would have. 100%. But I knew it wasn't going to be something they could use. Now, I did not predict exactly what it was, but I just knew it was not going to be something they could use. I like I knew what they it actually found be... because it actually did something to, you know, just kill all the Tyranids because my big thing was we nothing that they were going to use and they were all just going to die. And that just would have right. been awful. And we would have died in the process of trying to get this and it all would have been for naught. Which also would have been a very 40k ending. They allude, I knew it had to be something with the planet's origins because they alluded to how unnatural it was that all of these gemstones and when they were going through all the different gemstones i was like whoa in one place right like, that's wild so like i kind of had a feeling but i did not picture it being the genesis project that's i thought that was a great use of it and you know what i like that they found the macguffin with a caveat right it wasn't something that like to your point with the USB drive, right? It wasn't something that they would just be able to pick up, pocket, and get off the planet, right? I thought that was a great, that was a great hint for it. That, or a great, like, um, hindrance, handicap to it. That, nope, you're not just picking this up and taking it off. This is a big boy. There's right. a lot here. And so you're going to get that, some incomplete data. But they're like, data. but it was attached to the planet. Like, they, they couldn't get it off even if they had a ship big enough it was like vital to the planet they removed it the planet probably would have exploded regardless right it was it was very much um it was part of the it, it, again it was the reason the planet was the way that it was mm -hmm. useful though so i feel really weird and uh, like uncomfortable i feel vaguely uncomfortable about my next question here um what are we reading next carrie well, so I posted. We left it in the hands of our readers. Yes, I posed on, on our YouTube channel some suggestions because we'd gotten from some people they wanted us to read the Dark Angels books. So I was like, all right, you know what? Because we uh, took a while to get this book up there, and we do thank you for your understanding and being patient with us during this time. Um, uh, really quickly, I want to say thank you very much. I know a lot, several people reached out on social media. Um, YouTube, our site, Encrypted Vox channel. Thank you very much. It was, it was appreciated. And thank you for your patience. So I put up there, you know, to start the various omnibi that we are, you are reading. And so what I put up there was the second Salamander's book, which is what we were supposed to read. Uh, the second uh, Yark, Book of the Yark Omnibus, uh, Purging of Calidus. Or Catalyst, I think I spelled it wrong. And I was quickly pointed out. And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. Book it's one, staying that way. Book one of the Knights of Caliban, which is the first uh, Dark Angels trilogy. And then I threw up there, just to be nice, Void Stalker, book three of the Night Lords. And well, I don't know why you guys all hate me, but we're reading Void Stalker. I can't decide if you guys want to torture me or if you just feel really bad for Jen and are sympathizing with her or empathizing with her. And so 
you decided to throw her a bone and give her her favorite book. Or maybe it's a combination of the two. So out of curiosity, hmm? what's the second book? Because that'll probably be our second book that we read after that. Uh, second Depending place, on the publishing schedule. Yeah, second place is Dark Angel's book. All right. And then uh, Yark and Salamanders were dead even. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, so there you have it. We'll read Void Stalker, and then which which one is it? The, the Purging Dark Angels of one? Catalyst. Not Calidus, which I like, I like the name Calidus better than Catalyst, but it's Purging of Catalyst. Oh, with a K. Oh, it's Gav Thorpe. Of course it is. It's Dark Angels. I don't know what you expected. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Take a step back for a second. So, yes, I thank everyone for their thoughts and consideration of me as we go in to read Void Stalker. Um, but then... The immediate next book is the is the we love you too, Carrie, um, because <laughs> Gav Thorpe and Dark Angels. So you're gonna struggle. I'm gonna struggle. It's gonna be We're a gonna whole have an interesting next together. month. Yes, as we go into June, it's gonna be a little interesting um, bit of struggle. The struggle bus is coming. Um, purging of Calidus. Oh my Calidus. Oh my God. Uh, thank God for my new hobby. Anyways, do you want to take us out, Carrie, for Void Stalker next? Yay, Void Stalker. God, when I get the Night Lords, which actually I have like the first two books, but god dang it, we're going to get the Dark Eldar in there too. It's really good, and I'm really excited to You're re-read. really biased as well. I am so biased. <laughs> I don't claim to not be. This isn't like the net neutrality podcast. Like, yes, I have no opinions on any of the legions. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I I could like it. Stranger things have happened. But anyway, so but you've listened to the Warhammer 40k book club episode regarding Death World or by Vic- do you stop laughing? Victoria Hayward, be sure to join us next time for v- Void Stalker by ADB. We are an unofficial book club and not affiliated with the Black Library or any of its affiliates. You can find both the vidcast and podcast on our website, wh40kbookclub.com. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and all those wonderful things to the vidcast on YouTube, <clears throat> excuse me, or the podcast on anywhere you get podcasts. Come join our Discord. We have fun discussions there as well, and people often share what they are painting. I am not one of these people, but they also were like, yes, Dark Angels. Well, you guys lost this time. Apparently everybody else is like, yes, let's torture Carrie. That's okay. Especially Skywatcher Adept. I'm sorry. I know you really wanted... Dark Angels, but apparently you're going to get it next time. So it's all good. That's coming soon. That is coming soon. All right. Our site has articles about adventures and reading other Warhammer 40k books and short stories outside the book club books. So please stay a while and read from a crag. And everyone enjoy the unicorn mug. The beacons are lit. Chartreuse calls for aid. I guess I just realized I said that and uh, the podcast people are going to be like, what unicorn mug? I'm drinking tea out of a unicorn mug. That actually has a rainbow coming out of its butt. Who just listened to the podcast, you, I cannot accurately describe how brightly green this book is. It is very brightly green. I just changed the bulbs in this room and like, I feel like it's hitting that green and that gold foiling on there. Like it's the gold foiling. It's, it's, it's nice. And, uh, you know, um, God, what's his face? guy who likes to do a lot of lens flare that's what it looks like oh jj abrams yes thank you if jj abrams made a book published a book it would be chartreuse it doesn't even have a name anymore you guys that book doesn't even have a name it's just chartreuse i don't remember the name of the book (laughs) i just can't believe you don't remember indomitus by gab thorpe i remember it was by gab thorpe and that was it Indomitus. How could you have forgotten the title of this book? Probably because nothing in that book really matters in the end. Very, um, very nihilistic. More so than the book about a world being devoured whole. I don't even have my Voidstalker book like ready to go because I wasn't expecting this. I'm so excited, though.
Yeah, I don't either. It's over there on on the shelf. Uh, but I'll For be those listening. Those who have read Void Stalker. But I'll be listening to the audiobook because the guy who narrates the Night Lord's audiobooks is just amazing. Oh, and like for everybody on the vidcast, enjoy seeing my dogs who broke into my office. Apparently they developed opposable thumbs. Although knowing my pit bull, she probably just pushed her way through. <laughs> there is nothing that she can't hit her head against. It's true. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night, everybody.